Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Anita Po Show and the Bitcoin for Fairness series. In this show, we're talking about the role that Bitcoin is playing in enabling economic empowerment for individuals and communities all around the world by providing a fair and open access to this global financial network. My guest today is Alexandria, a self-proclaimed Bitcoin maximalist from Bulawayo, the second biggest town in Zimbabwe. We're talking about the political and living situation in his home country and how Bitcoin can be an instrument for a brighter future. Alexandria is keen on learning and he wants to set up the first Bitcoin and Lightning full node in Zimbabwe. But what he needs is a computer and a Raspberry Pi. He can't afford that. So please, Let's send him some Bitcoin, some Satoshis directly into his wallet over the Bitcoin for Fairness website. I've set up a donation campaign there and Alexandria gets all the money directly into his wallet without middlemen. So that's at Bitcoin for Fairness. The website is bffbtc.org and then slash and node donation in one word. Again, bff btc.org slash node donation. As always, you can watch this interview on YouTube or you can listen to it in your favorite podcast player. You can also try to send me some Satoshis via the Lightning Network when you are using the Breeze wallet, the Fountain app, or the Sphinx chat app. Thanks for supporting Bitcoin for Fairness. Go out to the Human Rights Foundation, OKCoin, and Leden and also to Trezor for donating hardware wallets for my Academy participants. Now, enjoy the show. Learn Bitcoin will teach you the why and how to use Bitcoin. Anita's book is a concise and approachable introduction to Bitcoin. Lynn Alden, investment strategist. Order your copy now at learnbitcoin.link. That's learnbitcoin.link. So hello, everyone. Today, I'm welcoming Alexandria from Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. Hello, Alexandria. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm, I'm enjoying being back in Arare because I actually grew up here in Arare and then I moved to Bulawayo. But this is my hometown and I love the language. I actually speak the local language here. I don't really understand the local language in Bulawayo too, too much. Okay, yeah. Bulawayo is about six hours away with bus or something, right? Yes, it's about six hours away, so it is quite of a journey. It takes almost takes a whole entire day um, to, 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 to get here. So, so you, you went a long way to come to my talk last Saturday in mm -hmm. Harare. Yes, I did. I mean, I, I, know I watched your, your podcast and I believe even the, the first time I Googled um, something to, to do with Zimbabwe and Bitcoin, It was, I, I saw your I saw your show, so I was like, w when I realized that you were coming into into Zimbabwe, I was like, I was, I was super excited to to, to finally come and, and meet you, and even um, so, I I represent uh, I work with a team called Global Bitcoin Invest, and we 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 do interviews with people all over the world. Um, and we started mostly we started in El Salvador. And then now we, we're just going, we're trying to cover everywhere. So when I saw that you, you're also doing, you also did a space where you're going into universities, I was like, that's an interesting way of, of helping spreading adoption. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to learn how did you do that? And um, like, mm -hmm. was it not controversy whenever you approach these universities um, just so that you wanted to talk? Okay, so the thing with the University of Zambia was that way that um, I connected uh, with people in Zambia, like in Lusaka. Okay. So a guy on Twitter wrote to me, like you did, mm -hmm. um, are you coming by any chance to Zambia too when you're visiting some Zimbabwe? And then I thought, yeah, I mean, it's the next country. Mm -hmm. uh, why yeah. not? Yeah. And if mm -hmm. they are inviting me and asking me to come, that's the perfect uh, opportunity because they then made everything on the ground. So oh, they, visible. there's Uh, there is Emmanuel from Youth for Crypto, which is an existing uh, community in Lusaka. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a student at the university. Wow. And I think he knew how to organize that. So what he did was he organized a room okay. in, the, in the university 
uh, and he just rented it, you know. And mm. then they made a flyer, uh, like an invitation flyer. They had other speakers, mm -hmm. and then they mm. sent it out to their contacts. And I posted it on on Twitter nice and on my website. And so it's basically, you know, you you just set up a room. Uh, yeah. It can also be an informal place, like mm -hmm. meet. Uh, outside somewhere yeah, under yeah, a tree yeah, you know yeah, yeah, exactly. you don't have to pay for a room yeah, uh, just make a, a, a time and a place like every first monday a month or something like that yeah. at this place and uh yeah that's how it works and i think you can also approach if you know any teachers uh, or people who have one foot in the schools mm -hmm. or in university and if if you can like tell them about the possibilities that Bitcoin brings to them and to their students, then I'm quite sure that they will also say, okay, yeah, come. I mean, yes, so, yeah. If, if, if you want to do that, do that. Yeah, it's the best opportunity, of course. Yeah, yeah best. Is, yeah. Is, is. yeah, because um, um, I, I also follow, uh, follow, follow politics and I was listening to one of the CCC um, conversations and one of these strategies was actually approaching universities mm -hmm. to sort of like if these if, if, if political parties can approach universities which is very controversial mm -hmm. i believe maybe something less controversial like um, um bitcoin may yeah be i mean you can you can uh communicate it that way it's financial education yeah. basic financial education okay. because you can also uh share your knowledge about money saving if people yeah. can save here yeah? yeah and how the opportunities are with bitcoin there yeah. and um so and there's also one thing i think many people think that bitcoin is a scam here yes, it is. so um you can also say i'm uh, introducing you to the things how you can detect scams so yeah. to put it that way, you're, you're protecting people with your knowledge, with yeah. your sharing your knowledge, yeah. so that they don't fall into scams because they will want Bitcoin anyways. Mm -hmm, exactly. But they they should know the right way, you know, to, to, to get it, it yeah. and not to, not to lose all of their money in a scam. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, maybe that's yeah, also an yeah, idea. Really yeah, I, I would definitely uh, try that. I remember this one guy was suggesting that maybe you don't go immediately say Bitcoin. Exactly. You just say okay. Um, I came to talk about fintech, mm -hmm. right? Um, for financial technology, or blockchain, or blockchain. Mm -hmm. and the reason why I'm coming to talk about um, about of, about fintech is because um, 80% of Zimbabweans are unbanked, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not interested in banking; they don't trust the banking system. So we're saying, okay, we wanted to use a um, alternative to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they might be skeptical to that, and like, okay, what is that? And then you have to say the magic word, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. and then maybe, hopefully, they they. They, 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 they will take it. I would, I would also do it that way yeah. because also uh, because of the m possible repercussions um, of the government uh. here. You know, you never know what is happening in the next one, two, three years. Maybe they really want a full ban of Bitcoin because they they said already they want to control it offshore. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They said that. Oh, because of the. Um uh, I guess the government is really struggling when it comes to um, they want to keep as much foreign capital in the country because we run a, a big deficit, mm -hmm. right, of foreign capital. Even if you look at the the um, the, the government the go, um, government expenditure, I believe it was in 2016 where this they spent three billion, three point five billion over uh, uh, over budget, and without even getting approval from the I believe it was the the, the, the Congress. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Zimbabwe is in desperate need of foreign of, of, of United States dollars, and they, that's why I believe that they also they, they place bans on people being able to send um, US outside of outside of Zimbabwe. So having Bitcoin, which can easily send money outside of Zimbabwe, is a bit of a challenge. I think something that they want to stop. But what's really interesting is that um, I'm seeing Bitcoin adoption um, come, f and and it's not coming from. Bitcoin is, as an investment, but I'm seeing Bitcoin adoption coming because it's a better form of currency. So what, what I mean is that um, because we're under sanctions, and I would love to get into that topic of, of, of sanctions, but because we're under sanctions, any individual that wants to get into financial markets often has to go through so many loopholes and it's challenging to get your money inside of, inside of Zimbabwe or outside of Zimbabwe. So what people do now is that they say, um, let me buy Bitcoin 
um, when it's outside, yeah. So when it's outside, when they as soon as they make their profits, they'll they'll sell their their, their, their salads from the exchange. You know, convert it to Bitcoin, and then they can easily send it here. And then through WhatsApp groups, they can what they can um, uh, they can convert it into US dollars. So to them, it's a better form. It's a it's a better form of it's a better medium of exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. means of exchange. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. A, a, a a rails to get money in and yes. out of the yeah. country. Yeah. And that's why, because like a lot of people always, you always find the case that they'll say, well, um, Bitcoin is the first, it's the first world problem. Bitcoin is too complicated. So people want to be able to understand it. But the thing is, you don't have to understand how Tesla is built or iPhone is, is made. You know, you just want to use a product. And if Bitcoin is just a better product, then I believe adoption will just occur. I wouldn't even say that Bitcoin is a product. Bitcoin mm-hmm. is no product in my point of view. It's an open network. Yeah. And that's, it's like the internet. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, The internet is also not a product. Mm-hmm. You can build products on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, because if, you, if we have take, used the word product, then people start to believe there's a company behind. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. And, and there is no marketing. I'm like, I remember this one guy I was talking to, because, you know, um, the only way I realized that these people were using Bitcoin as a as a minimum of exchange was when I finally like because I I'm you know as a as an investor or a Bitcoiner you know you I'm normally locked up in my room working for mom so I never really engage with people outside so now I'm actually engaging with people outside and um, this guy so when I was not talking to this person he's like well um, this is this is how you're supposed to sell Bitcoin I'm like I'm not trying to sell Bitcoin <laughs> no 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 this, this, it it doesn't need any marketing. Um, I'm just trying to tell you the benefits because you sometimes come with controversial points and you're saying, hey, no, that's not true. I'm just trying to um, fight the, the the feud. I believe that's the term. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's funny. It's exactly the same that happened to me. I was talking to people, uh, a guy in Zambia who uh, lost money in a scam, in a Bitcoin scam. Mm-hmm. And then I explained everything to him and said, it's an open network, etc., etc. And in the end, he said to me, so um, what are you going to sell to me? <laughs> and I said, nothing. I don't sell you anything. <laughs> I'm just giving information, you know, yeah, yeah. because because I don't want you to run into scams. So, OK, um, you just said um, you're sitting alone at home trying to invest or save money or things like that. So how did you uh, at the beginning learn about Bitcoin or how did you get to know it and why did you start using it? Okay. So um, how I got to new um, no Bitcoin was I started off as a value investor. So value investors, you um, especially Warren Buffett, you know Warren Buffett <laughs> who isn't too big of a fan. Um, I started off by buying because let me say this um, in Zimbabwe. As soon as I finished high school, I'm like, okay, how um, let me go and let me start working with no skills, you know, um, with no skills and just start getting income for myself. So I go, I start work. And these guys, the first paycheck I got, these guys, they didn't even tell you. So the, they said, after three weeks, then we'll start paying you. And after three weeks, we'll pay you $10 a month. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, um, you, you absolutely can't do anything with $10. US uh, then I tried other jobs. Again, it was about $10 a month. Um, and now I think the, the highest I got was about $30 US per month, right? And this is a, um, this is a, Result of, of of inflation, right? Because before um, we saw 800% inflation, um, wages were around 500 US dollars mm-hmm. for civil servants. Mm-hmm. And as soon as inflation kicks in, um, we saw wages go from 500 US dollars to about 40 dollars. And that's the thing that I feel like people also kind of miss out about inflation because people always think inflation is just is an increase in in um, cost of living, but it also affects how much you earn. Right, your the, the amount of money you earn reduces significantly, right? Because um, let me try to explain this: is that if you if 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 the cost of production starts to go up, and the businesses now can't um, can't pass that cost on to individuals, right? They have to start absorbing those costs, and the way they're going to absorb those costs is by reducing the pay of the of the of the of the, of the, of the employees because that's, those are the first people that uh, that they, that can use the cost now gonna bring it on to individuals so inflation is very is, 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 is a result of that so yeah so i go from i go from um, trying to make um, just trying to work to saying okay um let me just invest full time you know because i've always been passionate passionate about investing in financial markets so i've always been also just trying to start small businesses you know up and about and um, 
Yeah, so I, I thought the, the best way is instead of trying to like come up with the next Facebook, let me, <laughs> let, me uh, yeah, let me let me find um, good companies I can uh, to, to put my capital in. So I started off with with with, um, with stocks, and um, and I I used to listen to the guy called Kristen Pitch. I don't know if you know uh, um, the the Billionaire podcast. I forgot the, the name of the it. The yeah. the Billionaire podcast we listen to we. We follow Bitcoin. We, we follow billionaires, whatever, whatever. Ah, oh, okay. I don't know yeah. that one. I know Preston Pitch. Yeah, yeah Preston Pitch. So he, um, at first, he was also a value investor. You know, mm -hmm. he stayed away from trading. You know, mm -hmm. low type of in, in investing, and and I'm like, and then I was really, I was kind of upset in the beginning <laughs> when he started talking about Bitcoin, right? <laughs> you know, like I think a lot of people are because a lot of people view this thing as a scam. Mm -hmm. You listen to Warren Buffett, he's like, oh, it's, it's bad poison. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, yeah, you're playing the, the greatest fool theory. Um, you, you have all this feud, you know? So at the beginning, I was, I was kind of upset and I almost stopped listening to his podcast because of that. And then I just kept listening to him and then he, he came with so many valid points and I was just open-minded to that. I was like, okay, and then I did my own research. And you know, the, the first thing as an investor is that you want to calculate the intrinsic value of the asset. <laughs> yeah. And then if you're gonna see, okay, is this discounted to, 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 to the intrinsic value? And um, we believe that Bitcoin one day is gonna be worth around maybe $10 million a coin or $5 million a coin. So it's extremely discounted um, uh, to, yeah, it's extremely discounted, right? Um, to, to, to its actual worth, right? Um, and so Bitcoin is, is it presented itself as a perfect investment if you want to hold for the lifetime, right? You don't you don't you don't you don't buy just um, you don't buy for short term purposes. You just want to hold for for your for your entire for your entire life. And I thought Bitcoin was extremely discounted. So as soon as I calculated how much I could make, I'm like, yo, how can I get Bitcoin? <laughs> and that was the, one of the biggest challenges because you know mm -hmm. um, sanctions. We, we couldn't I couldn't just register on on an exchange. I, I contact my uncle, I contact my, my cousin, I'm like, yo, can you, can you please set up a for me because I can't do it in Zimbabwe. And they were so unwilling to help. They're like, no, this is, this is like tax taxation, this and that, you know, they just, they just don't want to help, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, so, 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 so um, from then, um, when I finally, when I finally uh, found a loophole through a uh, lunar account, mm -hmm. because my father, was was also was also was also it was he's he's also a bitcoiner and and and, and, and cryptocurrencies. I was surprised because uh, um, he he never used to like investment. He he wasn't really big on investment. And I, I used to just sometimes pitch the idea, investment ideas to him, and you kind of disagree. We have our disagreements, but the one thing that he was passionate about was uh, was was was. Um, was uh, cryptocurrencies. He's not. He's not a big on mass list, but yeah. But really? he was yeah. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Great. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I was like, and he was even like talking to most of my family about cryptocurrencies. You post it sometimes on a regular basis, and I'm like, okay, so you. How did you do it? How did you manage mm -hmm. to think? And he's like, um, he showed me how he managed, and I'm like, oh, right, let me try to accept because um, yo, I think also the, the problem with the largest Bobians is that. Um, as soon as uh, exchange says we don't take you on, they stop trying mm -hmm. to actually register on exchange, exchanges and stuff. Okay, so now you mentioned Luno. So if you yes. have someone in South Africa, I guess Luno is in South Africa, right? Is it in other African, African countries too? Do you know that? Um, I, I, I believe so. I, I th so Luno is, is, is available anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that now, uh, as soon as you say that you My address it? is in Zimbabwe, because I mean, you can say you can you can use your actual a passport and identification. That's not a problem. Right? Mm -hmm. The only challenge is when you say when you have a South African address and a South African, I was yeah uh, no. So if you have a Zimbabwean address and a Zimbabwean phone number, okay. these guys will get the immediate KYC flagging. Okay. So you need you can use your ID, but you need a uh, South African address. Yeah, you need a South African mm -hmm. address and a South African phone number and then you can actually create your own account mm -hmm. so now the challenge is you just send your money outside of Zimbabwe into South Africa and then, and then if you can make a direct deposit into your bank account then you, you're free to buy uh, Bitcoin the challenge is, is selling the Bitcoin because now when you try to sell the Bitcoin the exchange will say um, 
we need proof of it is this proof of this bank account proof of that so okay yeah you for, you, mm. i think you should do it differently <laughs> yeah yeah because <laughs> uh, these kyc uh exchanges they have to uh stay inside of their regulatory uh their regulations and so they start asking you all these questions um i mean you, what you what you what you intend to say is you can exchange your US dollars to Bitcoin there, but then you can't send it to your own wallet, right? To your self custodiant. Yeah, you now you, you now so, oh, so like I why yeah you yeah. can send it to your own wallet, can't yeah, I, you? Yes, I can. But I can. then you need also US dollars, right? Uh, um, no, so oh, so once oh. you buy Bitcoin, it's okay because Bitcoin can, can move anywhere, it can move freely. Okay. So actually, I, when I I don't I didn't really trust Luna. Because it's that was it's an African exchange. I have more faith in um, American regulated ex uh, American exchanges um, because often most scams um, happen outside of the United States. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 but but to be honest, I mm. wouldn't trust any yeah, yeah, centralized yeah, yeah, exchange. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's the next step. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Next, yeah, it's just um, it's just like well, what I'm trying to say is that is if I'm going to if I'm going to buy Bitcoin. I, I wouldn't put more faith. I would rather put would more rather, faith in, in the United States because yeah. most scams, when it comes to um, African countries, yeah. it's really high. Mm -hmm. It's really, really high. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, just just for like, if you if you want to use, uh, um, if you want to buy, and maybe just store for a short while before you put on a hard wallet. You know, uh, I would say okay, maybe uh, BlockFi or something that's actually in the United okay. States. Because of the, yeah, because of the regulations. Yeah, I mean, there. Had oh. also problems. Yeah, it was, yeah, I remember they, they got a uh, just recently got a hundred million dollar fine yeah. for 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 some for something. So, yeah. So yeah, um, I understand what you mean, but to be honest, I know someone who's working or has been working at Luno, so mm -hmm. I I think they are okay. Oh, but I, you know, but other <laughs> I don't know too. I'm I'm a, I'm saying to everyone, one self custody your Bitcoin. Yeah. So. Um, then you said you wanted to pay out US dollars, then they are asking for your bank account verification and all those things. Yeah. Is this when it's above a higher amount, like a limit of 1000 USD, or is it also ready when you only want to uh, pay out 100 USD? Well, um, I, I, I don't think that the, the amount matters. Mm -hmm. I just think it's only when you're selling your Bitcoin. Yes. That's when it can be a challenge. But I've, I've found, like, because of. Uh, Sell I, it for other coins or no? Yeah, you don't. You know, just if you if you're not wanting to sell the Bitcoin to to cash out fiat because maybe you yeah. need it for to pay an expense. Yes. that's yeah. when they ask for you these these um, that information and stuff. Yeah, but so then you, then you could like <clears throat> send the Bitcoin from the exchange to your own self custody wallet yeah, yes, and yes, then go to a money dealer here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, so now um, I, I believe that now the best way is um, is peer to peer transactions on my side. And I think that's, I mean, I think that's one of, I believe that's what Bitcoin really wanted to be, was a peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Yes. So I believe like the sanction thing, even though they restricted us from, um, from, from being able to, 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 to trade and stuff, they're making it more decentralized. So now we're not going to be, we're not going to be, um, we're not going to be um, tied to just one exchange, you know? Whenever you want to sell Bitcoin, Zimbabweans can sell. They, they're really developing. They're really developing their own networks in order to be able to do these, these, um, these transactions. So that's more decentralized, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's slightly a bad thing, but it also it's now kind of working out to be more favorable. Mm -hmm. Favorable. So yeah. Um, so yeah, sanctions. Uh, it, it, it is. It is. It kind of helped out a little bit. But mm -hmm. I, I love to even get into that topic of of what sanctions and, and government mismanagement has done and why Bitcoin would have helped. Yeah, uh, let us talk a little bit yeah. about that. Uh, I mean, what are the daily problems of Zimbabweans? I mean, there are a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so starting from load shedding when power is out at the mm -hmm. moment here yes, again, yes, yeah? Exactly. yeah? And to water delivery and that the, uh, the, the, the waste uh, is not um, taken it's away, yeah. also you pay for everything. Or like the the power is out now because the guys at CESA mm -hmm. uh, stopped working overnight and seems they need to mention some things today because they they don't work overnight because mm -hmm. then they have no transport yeah. and and you, for everything you need transport money because buses 
are very expensive. I mean, if someone, I think the average income is in between 50 US dollars and 300 maybe. Yeah, yeah. You're and really lucky to get the what, what cost mm -hmm. does the bus from Bulawayo here cost? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So the bus for bus from Bulawayo can cost around 25 US dollars. Yeah, so. And <laughs> that's someone's, almost that's someone's entire wage. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, so now, so this is the, the, uh, what I like to begin with when it, when it comes to you, um, the challenges in Zimbabwe is that um, what you often find um, is that you have both individuals putting the blame on each other. You have the people, uh, or you have government, government, you have, so you have government mismanagement and you have sanctions. Mm -hmm. And what these people try to do is that they try to push the blame onto saying that all the problems coming from sanctions. And mm -hmm. then, and then so the guys who are sanctioned in Zimbabwe are like, oh no, all the problems are coming from Zimbabwe. You know, it's not, um, you, you should look at your government ETC, right? And I'll, let me start off with, with government mismanagement so that people, I don't, <laughs> so like, um, understand to, to know so that I don't piss off the wrong people, you know, to say that um, government management here in Zimbabwe is extremely bad, you know. So if you're talking about ZESA, um, um, ZESA power cuts. One of the reasons why we have um, ZESA power cuts is firstly is because um, most of the infrastructure that was built in Zimbabwe was, I think it was before 1980, mm -hmm. when it was Zimbabwe was so in time, right? And it was, the cities weren't over capacitated yet. They were very small, right? Um, these guys, when they built them, they hoped that they, um, they will keep, there will be more investments to preach on, so that as the population grows, the population expands, um, so does the infrastructure for this expand, right? And the government gets the money. I believe those those one incident where the government got about sixty million dollars um, to 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 buy to build um, um, solar panel to build solar panels to improve the uh, the power infrastructure. Um, but you know, you know, it's in Zimbabwe. Um, they gave it to one of his friends. They gave it to one of their friends, someone with no experience whatsoever. The guy gets the money, and he just builds a, a few ten houses, and then he he takes off. Mm -hmm. They catch him. They, he put, he does five years, but what he's robbed robbed people from is he's robbed people so many people from electricity right this money could have because i mean even one of the the, the things where we, we're experiencing right now is there's extreme a lot of people like entire neighborhoods in Blowayo having the coppers having the their, their, their power cables stolen right mm -hmm. and the government has no money to to repair these these cables mm -hmm. right they, they have no money to repair these cables um, to replace these cables. So after so, so what what is happening is that if the if the actual community itself doesn't come together and cooperate to bring to raise the money so that they can buy their own cables, mm -hmm. they can spend up to two years, up to three years with more power. Yeah. You know, uh, I experienced four months because it took it was like we spent we had to raise up to close to seven U, seven thousand US dollars, right? It was just twenty houses, I believe. Mm -hmm. 20 houses they had to raise up to 7,000 US dollars um, to replace these cables okay. because the government thing. And you can so you need to say, um, why is this the case exactly? Why is this happening? Well, it's because the government um, has nationalized most of the industries in, in Zimbabwe. They've nationalized 107 companies. And they, they've lost, I mean, these, on average, these companies lose, lose up to $300 million. They owe up to they owe three billion dollars. This alone, I believe, I believe it was in 20, um, 2018, lost uh, lost half a billion dollars. And right. I, yeah, and I think one problem is also that the government then goes to China or to other countries uh, to get loans, and uh, for those loans, uh, they basically give away all the natural resources, everything. I mean, China is mining everywhere here. In mm -hmm. in nature, uh, do you, how do you say it? Nature heritage, uh, yeah, nature ar heritage yeah, yeah. areas and things like that. So there's no protection of the environment at all and no protection of the common good. Like there's also the topic of gold smuggling, right? Yes, yes. So yeah, I mean, the, one of the, one of the arguments this, this ruling party likes to likes to say is that um, we we liberated. Um, the, the Zimbabwe's from 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 the colonialists, right? And now, and we're, we're better off from South Africa because South Africa sold all the resources, and um, and uh, thing. You unlike Zimbabwe, we've kept our resources, and that's not true. In fact, let me just give you um, some cases is that in Ch um, the Chelsea diamond mine um, lost fifteen billion dollars worth uh, worth of diamonds. Lost. 
Nice. 50, yeah. It's just over Lost. YouTube. Lost. <laughs> ah, yeah, <weird. laughs> yeah, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, 50 billion dollars. Um, the, 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 what you call it? Um, every year about close to 1.4 billion dollars worth of gold is, is looted or smuggled out of Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. right? Every year. Mm-hmm. On average, we actually lose, we lose um, 10 billion, uh, 2.2 billion dollars every year to corruption, right? Um, Command Agriculture, the project we are run by the government, I believe it was $10 billion, $10 billion that was looted, mm-hmm. right? Wow. Go on. Yeah. And the, the reason why we, 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 this is very important is because Zimbabwe lacks, um, it really lacks infrastructure. Or it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it goes into, it actually goes and affects um, the lives of actual, actual citizens. Mm-hmm. Right now, um, Zimbabwe doesn't have any um, Cancer, ca- 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 this, like, this, cancer? This, this is cancer machine, I believe, because I forgot the exact uh, name for it. Yeah, it costs about two, yeah. Health, health yeah, uh, yeah. services and stuff, yeah. yeah. It costs about $2 million for, for mm-hmm. one machine. Mm-hmm. We I don't also have heard, one. I also heard that women are dying quite regularly when they are at childbirth because yeah. there is not uh, the medical uh, infrastructure needed to save their lives. Yeah, about 2,500 2, um, females die every, every year. Oh. Because they, they, there's a specific theatre that they need um, for it, and the machine only cost it only cost you seven uh, okay it only cost seven um seven I think it was seven thousand seventy five thousand U U S dollars. The government the government gave out eight point three million dollars in new discoveries, you know, to the guys to the top chef guys, mm-hmm. new cars for themselves. They don't need yeah. these cars, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could have, they could have bought, they could have actually changed this, the economic situation, mm-hmm. but they don't, mm-hmm. right? So the, the the one thing that that's also very important is, is take for is that the government um, socializes the cost of their failures on individuals, and that's very important because this is something that is only possible with a fiat system, right? With a fiat system. So the the reason being is that um, Bitcoin uses proof of work, right? You have to produce value in order to to be able to to, to, be, able, to be able to attain it. With the fiat system, um, um, what you call it? So yeah. So in the in the fiat system, is that the government is, fiat is basically the government can um, can print money, and call, which causes inflation, which um, inflation is an indirect tax, right? So I believe is that um, if a company fails, like Zesa, right? Because um, maybe because of government mis- mismanagement, or even yeah, just even like or yeah, the government because of government mismanagement. If is, if Zesa loses money, if Zesa lost about like I told you five five hundred million dollars, right? If when Zesa loses that five hundred million dollars, they can just go to the government and say, "Listen, um, what well, we're failing, can you just please give us another five hundred million dollars to pay these expenses and stuff?" And the government can just print um, that money out of creation, right? In a normal market, in a normal free market, if if a company fails to provide to provide value to to a service, right, and it goes bankrupt. It will simply fail, mm. and right, and a better company will come and simply mm. replace it. Mm. But because we're using fair systems, the government can keep afloat that 107 companies which mm. don't make any money, mm-hmm. right? I think at our expense, mm. either through indirect in th- indirect um, um, taxation like inflation, indirect ta- taxation like VATs, indirect uh, taxations through like um, uh, the cost of fuel, because I remember Zimbabwe has one of the highest costs of, of, of fuel. And it just uh, has risen in the last week. Yeah, I think yeah. from 1.5 to, to oh, it's one. 2 in Bulawayo, or, or 8.7 in Bulawayo now. Yeah, wow. wow, wow. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, the highest tax. I mean, we, um, fuel comes, we, we, fuel actually passes, um, what, fuel, um, what you call it, Zambian fuel. Actually, passes goes through Zimbabwe. Which fuel? Z- um, Zambian fuel. Zambian fuel goes through Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, and it is still cheaper. It's actually more oh. affordable than thing mm-hmm. <laughs> than us, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we also pay high tech. We also pay this two percent tax on almost every transaction that we do. On we every bank. eco-cash transaction, can, yeah. transaction and day. bank, right? Yes, yes, yes. So just, just like just sending you money there, mm-hmm. right? And these taxation, like we like that Econet transaction, is only possible because, well, I, I believe it's only possible because we're using a centralized um, exchange that the government yes, can definitely. control. You know, mm-hmm. right? Um, to to keep these hundred the hundred companies afloat is only possible because um, the government can can take can can take our capital without our permission and just keep paying these 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 guys, 
right? They could raise money. I said that it's for a project which never materializes. They give mm-hmm. to their friends and it never materializes yeah. and yeah. stuff. So the first point is that, um, yeah, so the first point is that government mismanagement has caused significant problems in the economy, right? We experienced, <laughs> we experienced inflation of 2.38 million dollars percent percentage wise in 2008. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Two it was the hyperinflation two, yeah. time, yes. Two, two million, two million, two, 200 million, 238 million dollar percent. But even now, inflation. I think it's in a way hyperinflation already. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're experiencing inflation around 800 percent, right? Mm-hmm. 800 percent inflation. Mm-hmm. Meaning, and what inflation means is that you have to work 800 percent harder to obtain the exact same math yeah. that you had to do. You know, these, these, your phone or the, the, the bus fare or the bread, it's the exact same loaf. Right? Sometimes or inflation... Yeah. It um, even gets higher, the price gets higher. Yeah. So if you want to have unlimited internet here, like you would have in Europe or something, you're paying 300 US dollars a month. Mm. I mean, in Austria, I, I pay 35, yeah? Wow, yeah? 35 only? Yeah. How long is the Wi-Fi? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I should come there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it is really, really expensive. So government's management has, it has, it has contributed to, to the thing. And then, okay, so now we also can now get into to, um, sanctions. And um, sanctions, sanctions are imposed, uh, sanctions will always be imposed whenever a country, under, uh, under international law, right? Um, whenever a country is unwilling or unable to protect its citizens, um, the international community, international, uh, other countries now have to step in to protect, the, to, to protect their citizens, right? Um, that's what they have to do. Mm. So they, they feel obligated to. So, um, you know, human rights ab- uh, abuse, abuses happen here as well. We have always been happening. Yeah. You know, just this last week, um, just yesterday, I believe, um, uh, this, 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 this news reporter, Fadzi, mm-hmm. uh, Fadzi, I've got a Fatima Heri, she's a lawyer, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah she's actually mm-hmm. a lawyer. She, her car got broken into, and I believe she was attacked, you know. Mm-hmm. The, a few days before that, tonight, BT, um, these guys came with X's and even one person had a gun apparently, right? And it's because it's uh, election time yeah, election and there time. are the uh, rallies uh, for the election running and there's a new party, the CCC, which is oh. an opposition party, yes. and they are under attack. Yes, the Citizens Coalition of Change. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they have been, I mean, you know, San PF was always, was always kind of upsetting because San PF was always saying, we're a democracy. Please, we are democracy. Um, the sanctions must go, and they always say the only reason for sanctions is because we we took back the land um, that was taken from us and we redistributed it. And if you even look at how they redistributed it, it's mm-hmm. questionable. Mm-hmm. But they, it's not only that. No, no. It is. It's because, definitely not that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's mostly because of the human rights violations. Exactly. It's because they, um, I believe, in two thousand and eight, they they didn't allow they didn't allow the international community to come and watch. Uh, um, these elections because these these elections aren't free and fair, mm-hmm. right? You see a lot of um, we believe a, a lot of rigging in these elections. You see one state that is, that doesn't have even a population of three hundred thousand people, but the vote count is that they got three hundred thousand votes for this uh, for this political party. So yeah, um, so um, in 2000, 2002, the first sanctions were imposed. Um, by Europe because the the European guys were kicked out for 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 um, when they wanted to come to to, to see the votes, right? Mm-hmm. And what happened was that a hundred. Um, f- firstly, Europe used to send about one hundred and twenty eight million dollars to um, to the Zimbabwean government. Mm-hmm. They stopped that. Yeah, right? I mean, if it's mismanaged, <laughs> yeah, it never gets mismanaged. to the people. It never gets yeah. to the people. Why why should we bother? Yeah. Why should we bother? So they stopped that. They banned about, I think they first banned about 20 individuals uh, uh, who were connected to the Zanapi uh, party, right? And then uh, what came next was um, the, the American sanctions, um, which is known as Zidara. Mm-hmm. So Zidara, um, Zidara stands for Zimbabwe's um, Economic Economic Recovery Act. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, Zimbabwe's um, e- Economic Democratic Recovery Act, uh, something like that, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. And the reason why is, um, American sanctions are very, very important is because um, <laughs> um, sanctions they work through three ways. They work firstly by um, supply chain disruptions, trade blocks, and then financial restrictions. 
okay, mm -hmm. financial restrictions. And financial restrictions are one of the reasons why we actually experience hyperinflation or, or um, inflation in the economy. If you look at, or just one slightly, slightly different reasons, if you look at any country right now, um, they're either experiencing double digit inflation or triple digit inflation that have been sanctioned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, this guy also pointed out the fact that sanctions aren't there. The, and the problem is that these guys always say they say targeted, uh, targeted sanctions, and it's not true. It's not true. Actually, they, they say that because of PR. Mm -hmm. But the real reason for sanctions, the real reason for sanctions is to punish, is to is to is to is to punish the citizens in that country, so that the citizens will 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 what you call it will will, will stand um, up. Yeah, will stand up and try to enforce change either yeah. through a democratic way or through <laughs> political uprising. Yeah, but the thing is. Uh, if you have been living in a dictatorship for so many years, if you see the daily uh, abuse like of people, they are going missing and they never come back. There are uh, women are raped and things like that because of political reasons. Then how should the people here really? Uh, how should they be able and have the power to rise up? You know and to dare. Uh, to stand up against um, the government, yeah. Well, is, is this even like okay? Even if you, see, you used to talk about how it's a dictatorship, but even in a, in, a, in a democratic sense, the government has monopolized as a monopoly on violence. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, an, another topic. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yes, it's a monopoly on violence. Yeah. So you, it, there's no one that can um, keep the government at check if they, if they. Um, yeah, I mean. It depends. I think yeah, in a okay. democratic country, you at least have the feeling that you're able to elect the party yeah, that the most yeah. people want in government. Yeah. And you can uh, take those down with another election. Yeah? Another and election, and you, yeah. you are allowed to go demonstrating, you are allowed to go on the street uh, and things like that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, And that you don't have, have that here, basically. Yeah, I mean, just Saturday, the CCC uh, uh, election rally in Marondera was um, banned. By it was police, banned, it was banned. <laughs> but the 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 government political yeah. party held its. I understand. <laughs> yeah, because the, the government, whenever they want to host a, a rally or meeting, they don't have to. They don't have to ask for permission. Yeah. Okay. So the they just do it. Yeah, yeah. They just do it. Citizens' coalition for change has to ask for permission, mm -hmm. yeah. and then when they do get permission, you look at what happened in um, in Gokwe, I believe, where these guys. Uh, no, no, actually it was Kwekwe, mm -hmm. where the Zanopi of youth thugs came in. So one person even had a spear, came in with metal bars and were beating, like they were brutally beating um, the citizens' coalition for change people. Mm -hmm. People were coming with scars, people had broken verbs. A person actually mm -hmm. died, yeah. right? And this is right before, uh, um, I believe, uh, I forgot the, 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 the person for it, uh, whether it was vibe, uh, the, the vice the vibe. The vice president or something like that—I mm -hmm. uh, forgot his name. Mm -hmm. So um, he said that we want to crush the citizens' coalition mm -hmm. like lice, right? You know what I mean? Wow. You know, mm -hmm. so they're inciting political violence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons because there is no rule of law in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So of course, the international community has to impose sanctions mm -hmm. on on, mm -hmm. on 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 Zimbabwe. Yeah. Right? But the problem is uh, that it also. Um, is negative has negative effects f to the regular people because they can't go at an exchange mm -hmm. and as soon as you say i have an address in zimbabwe you're out yeah mm -hmm. so and that's i think why bitcoin is so important because it's the only money or tool that you can get without these kyc processes yeah yes 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 yeah so exactly so yeah um that's what i want to get into now was that um let me, let's, let's, look at, let's look at financial restrictions mm -hmm. so as soon as sanctions are imposed they they use they use Swift you know Swift to the Swift, yeah. yeah 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 so what Swift has is it actually has this thing you can actually even go YouTube it it talks about um, suction screening so suction screening mm -hmm. is so normally before sanctions um, if I wanted to send a payment from from here in Zimbabwe um, I could just send it um, I could just send it to you in, in Austria right All right easy easy um, so the, the payment will come from here and then it'll go to here easily now with Swift, with Swift suction screening I the either user if I don't know I can I can send the payment, and then it gets it goes through a floating screen. So what either happens is that firstly it gets stopped here and it goes for investigation, or it gets immediately blocked mm -hmm. because it has this it has this link to Zimbabwe, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a completely 
mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it completely um, cuts out uh, what you call it, it completely um, cuts out all individuals mm-hmm. in Zimbabwe from, 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 from financial services, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so we can't sit, we can't buy assets outside of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Even when it comes when it comes to international payments. Mm-hmm. So what happens with banks is that they use this thing called um, uh, is, 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 is bank relations, something, customer bank relations or something like that, you know, corresponding bank relations, mm-hmm. right? So um, whenever we want to do international transfer, whenever we want to do international, um, international payment, right? Um, or maybe a bank in the United States would, um, they would, um, the, I will make a payment, I will like, I will take my, card, my, my, my credit card or whatever card, I will, I will swipe it, right? Then that information goes to, go, um, or will go to, 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 to what? To, to America. That, that credit information to say that this, this payment has made ETC. Right? Every transaction yeah, goes every transaction. To, Ameri- to the US, yes. Yeah, exactly. Every single every transaction. transaction goes to the United States, mm-hmm. exactly. But as soon as taxes were imposed, you're like, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. You're cut off. You're cut off. So you cut off basic transactions. You also make it, um, you also make the cost of getting access to capital is significantly higher. Normally, I believe um, it's around, um, it can be around 1%. Uh, was, was the, is this, is this payment is this form called the credit um credit um credit something whenever you want to do whenever you want to transact uh, do international um, business transactions like if you want to import fuel for mm-hmm. example right you have to you have to the, you have to get a, a credit a credit form credit loan uh, here credit. in 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 Zimbabwe you mean yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. have to get like a, a you have to do this central bank auction to yeah. ask for U.S. dollars yeah 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 well no so so um. Yeah. Wait. Well, so the co- yeah. So those are the points of the cost of capital is also extremely high because you're under sanctions, right? Mm-hmm. Investment is also deteriorated, right? Mm-hmm. If you um, there's no every time once a, a country goes under sanctions, all investors pull out. You know, yeah. Because yeah. they said that oh, because it's not secure to invest anymore. Why should I invest know, here invest when the when the money uh, deteriorates and I, mm-hmm. I have no uh, regulation that's secure because they change it whenever they want. They will be whenever they want. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. So you, you you have that basically, and it's, it's yeah. Um, so like the, the access to capital really really goes down, right? If you if you actually look at one 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 case like Venezuela, as soon as sanctions were imposed, or after 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 some time of sanctions being imposed, the income per capita dropped by seventy two percent. That's a total. That's like having four Great Depressions and in, in one depression. You know, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I remember you remember reading the, the history of the Great Depression, mm-hmm. how people were starving, mm-hmm. unemployment cures were like that. Mm-hmm. And you look at Zimbabwe, ninety-two percent unemployment, mm-hmm. right? Um, 76 percent of the youth in the working age are unemployed. Mm-hmm. Um, we're earning like average income of what forty dollars to, mm-hmm. to about two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. which is not livable. The cost of living is on. for And you also you get it in RTGS and not in US dollars. Yeah. So in, you get in, it in the weak Zimbabwean <laughs> uh, currency. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. And uh, but that's also you know the one thing that also kind of gives you confidence is that most Zimbabweans will, will never as soon as they get the RTG if they can. They'll convert it into US dollars mm-hmm. because they know that this isn't a good form of currency, mm-hmm. right? So you, I also see that happening with when the US dollar starts to hyperinflate or starts to inflate. You want to see people also saying, "Hey, this isn't a good form of currency. Let me think. Let me let me put it into Bitcoin, regardless of whether they know how Bitcoin works, but they just know that Bitcoin has a good track record of of thing of actually appreciating and not be or be deflationary instead of being inflationary." And, and do you have the feeling that more and more people here in Zimbabwe know that and want to start using Bitcoin? Yes, yes, yes. Well, and that's what I was saying. That um, my father, my father was mm-hmm. into Bitcoin way before me, mm-hmm. right? And my, and my father, he doesn't invest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you see someone saying, "Okay, let me invest for the first time," mm-hmm. and that's what you're seeing, right? People who've never been investors are saying, "Okay." Let me, let me, what is Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. Or what is the real return on Bitcoin? Yeah, you know? but you also say uh, short term trading is not the way to go, right? Is this your. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, 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 yes. I, I don't believe, I actually, uh, I, 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 I don't like Forex, right? I mean, if you just look at the numbers, because, okay, the one thing that whenever you're making decisions is that um, you, you must say that um, 
nothing is 100% certainty, right? Science has proven that nothing is 100% certainty, right? But what we can do is we can use probabilities. We can, whenever we make a decision, we say, okay, this has a high, has 70% probability of working. This has a 70% probability of failing. Look at the probability of forex trading or trading in general. Or oh, forex trading, 97% of them fail within the first six months, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They lose everything. Not just yeah. fail, they lose everything, yeah. right? Um, traders, if you look at um, if you look at why the, the difference between value investing and and trading is that um, the correlation between price action and fundamentals within the, uh, a time frame of three years is only 36 percent, um, right? Thirty mm-hmm. percent, meaning that if I if I if I if I gave you a coin today and I said double nothing your net worth, right, right. Um, you have a fifty percent probability mm-hmm. of doubling your, your, of your money, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't take that, right? <laughs> you need it worth. But individuals have less, have less, a lesser probability of being successful in trading yeah. <laughs> yeah. than a coin toss. Yeah. So, um, I mean, people, if they, if you're successful in it, uh, uh, kudos to you. But I just believe it's just it's just too highly risky um, for me, right? Yeah. And Bitcoin is way no one no one who's who's who's, who's invested in Bitcoin over a time frame of. Of, of three point five years or four years has ever lost money. Exactly. In fact, they've achieved a return, um, an average return of two hundred percent every year. Mm-hmm. You know. So um, I've heard you on another podcast, mm-hmm. and you were talking about how you orange pill other people and how they can earn Bitcoin here. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned BlockFi, right? Okay, yeah. Can well, you tell me how that works? Because I then have a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so um, I. So, so firstly, when, when I was investing, I was I was, vid- I was visited with Charles Schwab. I don't know if you know Charles Schwab. No. It's a it's a Merkin, um New York Stock Exchange, basically. Right? Um, and then I'm like, okay, so now I need these guys don't they don't do bank they don't mm-hmm. do they don't do they things. Don't Bitcoin, right? So I'm like, okay, wh- where can I buy my Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. So first it was Luna. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I don't know Luna. It's, it's a South African exchange. I don't. I'm not too familiar with mm-hmm. it, right? And I'm like, okay, um, then YouTube. Okay, what other exchanges available? And you say, oh, BlockFi is available. And so I, I was supposed to customer of BlockFi, and BlockFi gives you a reward of for every for like for one thousand for one thousand US dollars you get forty bucks, mm-hmm. um, for five thousand you get um, you get two hundred bucks, mm-hmm. right? So the rewards they 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 very low. It's okay, right? And then um, I, I used to follow BlockFi, but I noticed that Celsius was people were always talking about Celsius, yes. and Celsius for for every for for the person for a new person who creates an account and deposits four hundred US dollars. They get a hundred dollar, or they get fifty dollar for depositing, mm-hmm. and the person who referred them gets fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. So, so in total, it's a hundred US dollars. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, what, um, instead of just keeping my money um, in one account, if I find new individuals every day, every month, sorry, mm-hmm. right, and I deposit my own cash into their accounts, so mm-hmm. they're taking no risk. Mm-hmm. I'm taking all the risk by entrusting them, <laughs> um, and then we share the hundred dollar reward. Mm-hmm. Right. But how long do you have to have the money inside Celsius? I yeah. mean, I can't. Uh, you you won't be able to put it in, get the hundred uh, yeah, rewards, no, no, and yeah. put it out again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they have a lockup period of one of one month, about thirty days. Okay. Right. Yes. Did you, so uh, for the vi- uh, listeners, so uh, BlockFi and Celsius, and uh, there's another platform called Leden, which are Leden. actually sponsors okay. of oh, my oh, my, yes, yes, my yes, travels yes. and everything. Okay. Um, they are lending platforms, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you can deposit your Bitcoin there and yes. get a USDC or a USDT stablecoin loan, loan, loan okay, okay. Uh, that you then can pay back over time, but you keep your Bitcoin, so you yes, get yes, your yes. Bitcoin out again. Uh, I'm, I'm saying I'll be interested in, in getting a loan. Ah, okay, I, yeah, because I thought that's mm-hmm. what you do. So you on, on Celsius, you just deposit US dollars? No, I deposit Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I deposit Bitcoin. Yeah, yes, you deposit Bitcoin and you get a uh, hundred dollar worth of Bitcoin as a uh, right. premium, like a... As a, because uh, this is like a promotion, basically. As a promotion, yeah, Because okay. on, on, on average, what the real, the real interest that these guys offer you is a 6% um, monthly interest. Mm-hmm. Because remember, these guys, they, 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 they take your Bitcoin and then they lend it out to other individuals. Oh, okay, yeah, so you yeah. can lend or you can... Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, or you can borrow. Yeah. Yeah, you can borrow. So yeah, so I mean... So from there, like, you know, I was able to make up to about, so it's just depending on the price of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. but you can make up to, so I was able to make up to like $500 or $800, depending on how much cash you have um, um, to create accounts and stuff. Okay. So it's about 20% return yeah. monthly. And do, okay, and do yeah. you have to KYC? 
there yeah, so and yeah. Celsius and all of them, I guess. Yeah, so, so um, with, with Celsius, I have to work with people outside of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So I just find, so I just tell my friend, listen, if you're able to find other individuals outside of Zimbabwe to help you create accounts for you, mm -hmm. then I can share the reward with you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's able to just create income. Mm -hmm. And th that's the nice thing about that income is that it's not dependent on you, on, 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 a, on a job, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can do that and then go back to whatever work you were doing because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a Chinese student. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I don't have that much time to be actually working for other individuals, but I'm still making, I'm able to make more from Bitcoin yeah. than a normal job mm -hmm. yeah. in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So another question comes up now. We've talked about USDC and USDT stable okay. coins. Yeah. Um, do you use them? I, I've never used. Know, I've, I've never used a stable coin. Okay. Because um, I have the feeling that nobody here ever has used it. No, I don't. We okay. haven't used it. Um, one person was recommending that if you if Bitcoin wants to become a legal tender, can't see. Like Zimbabwe, it, it will be. <laughs> Which won't happen <laughs> with that government. <laughs> no. Um, you would have to use, you, it would be good for you guys to use Bitcoin and a stable coin because of the volatility, the current volatility mm -hmm. now. Um, because like other people who aren't investors, they do need um, thing. They, they, they will, they, they can't really take, uh, they, they, they can't really handle the volatility. Yeah. But I don't know, I just, uh, I'm not too sure about that. I'm seeing people right now, they prefer using Bitcoin. <laughs> as, okay. as a medium of exchange because like remember as the folks traders who want to think mm -hmm. yeah I was really surprised by that I never knew that I never knew that individuals were using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange uh, because it's much better than the US dollar yeah of course so have to do chance, to do it's faster you have less yeah. fees mm -hmm. uh, and I mean even more the lightning network yeah are yeah. you using the lightning network yes yes I, I definitely use the lightning network okay um, what are you doing with the lightning network because the last thing about the lightning network is that um you don't need any information. You just download the application. So whenever I'm entrepreneuring individuals, like, okay, how can I get access to, to, to Bitcoin? Or I want to buy Bitcoin, um, uh, how, how can I get it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, um, just download this application. Mm -hmm. Which one do you use? Um, well, I, I've, got, I've got multiple. I use yeah. um, Wallet of Satoshi, Blue Wallet, um, Moon Wallet, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the, the, those, 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 mm -hmm. those three, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm saying, just download this application, just download the, the, the wallet, you know? And no, then? And then and I'm like, okay, listen, then you can give me the money, I send you the, I send you your Bitcoin, right? And it happens instantly, it's an instant yeah. transaction. Okay, so um, where do you get Lightning from? Lightning from? Um, I mean, you uh, earn Bitcoin yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that, and then you exchange it into Lightning, or do you earn Lightning somehow? Or do you have friends all around the world who send you a little mm -hmm. bit here and little, there? Little, little, little. Okay, so, um, well, these, I, I play, I, I've, I've now started also starting play, playing these video games, mm -hmm. <laughs> Bitcoin games. CBD um, or yeah. Thunder games, yeah, or both? Yeah, yeah or I, I, I didn't know about the CBD, I, I've been meaning to try. Uh -huh. I, I tried Thunder games, they've always won that much though, but um, yeah, I, I just, I recently tried Thunder games. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm getting, so I can earn through that way. Also, whenever um, remember I, we, we host spaces with with, with big uh, uh, Kobo BTC, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big, big. and they give out up to your budget, they give out up to a hundred thousand satoshis to fifty thousand satoshis every week um, to the community. Yeah, to to because mm -hmm. every week we're uh, interviewing a new community mm -hmm. in a different country, mm -hmm. um, and Lucas is just a really generous guy. He was, mm -hmm. I think he was one of the, uh, the people who created it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so every week he. He he, um, he also space. I, I believe even when I first got onto, um, when I first got when I first found uh, Blob and Vulcan Face, um, these guys just they were, like they heard my story. They're like, "Yo, we want to hear your story," and he sent me so much Bitcoin. It was, it was insane. But he sent me through Lightning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most of the most of the money is just um, um, uh, coming from from other Bitcoiners comes from Lightning and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, even when I want to when I when I want to do transactions with my uncles or my friends who are just getting into Bitcoin. Instead of them having to do KYC and do Luna Moon Wallet, which is very complicated and stuff, mm -hmm. I just say download with Lightning. Yeah, but I, I mean, yeah. just a but, a little mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah. You can also do that with Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. in the Moon Wallet or in the Blue Wallet, you have Bitcoin and Lightning, yes, 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 you and you can use, that. and you don't have to KYC that there yeah. too when they only get the money peer to peer, like from you or yes. from someone else. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is the, the only challenge is that um, all my Bitcoin is always working. <laughs> in South Seas, but those they are all yeah. working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my money is working. Because yeah. the reason, reason why that's also very important is because um, I, got into, I got into Bitcoin in, 20, in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. 
and the market has always just been it's been very volatile mm-hmm. it's been actually going down mm-hmm. uh, but i i i'm a value investor mm-hmm. i love that the market is going down mm-hmm. i actually hope that it goes down for maybe another two years <laughs> so that i can just keep acquiring mm-hmm. as much bitcoin as cheap as possible mm-hmm. but now if i if you orange peel someone mm-hmm. and the first question that they're going to ask you is did you make money yeah and if i didn't if i wasn't doing the celsius thing my answer would have been oh no i've lost 50 of yeah. my accounts yeah. you know and they were like oh so bitcoin is a scam as rubbish but now because of the celsius thing I can always say, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm actually making close to five hundred dollars every month from Bitcoin, mm-hmm. and so it's kind of an incentive to say, oh, oh, so maybe Bitcoin, I can do, I can actually own Bitcoin, and it's, it's, it's a good way because it, it changes the narrative of 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 just owning Bitcoin through, um, uh, through trading uh, yeah, or, 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 or just, value going up. Oh yeah, or you are you just waiting for capital gains appreciation? Yeah. Right? Um, to you actually just earning Bitcoin every month exactly. and buying more and more Bitcoin every Because month. the scams tell you you get 100% profit in three months. Yeah? And the people believe oh. it because they lack financial basic ed- yeah. education. So Actually, five, so my uncle, because I had two uncles, and it was really surprising because these, these guys are brothers. And they got scams because he believed that they can earn about 5,000, 5, no, 5%. Return every day. I'm like every no, <laughs> like that's and that's and we were earning through Bitcoin trading. I'm like yeah yeah, yeah. no uh. you really that's that's not the case. Like, that's really not the case. And it's bad because they 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 really tense the image of the financial industry. Yeah. But I mean, uh, it's what's surprising is that there's scams in almost every industry. Mm-hmm. Whether you're doing logistics, um, whether there are also doing, scams with yeah. local currency or US dollars. Yeah, you, yeah, and and, and then you know. So I'm always surprised how people like. As soon as you, you you say finance and online, people are just like no. I remember this one girl. She's just like no online online finance. No, mm-hmm. they, they don't bother me. I, I don't want to because mm-hmm. they just automatically assume that it is 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 a scam. Mm-hmm. But the world is becoming digital. So I feel yeah. like yeah, I, I don't know why people are always trying to fight progress. You know, I feel like the young people and individuals will always just try to fight um, progress. They they. They're scared. Yeah, they, they're scared of change. Mm, and, exactly. And, uh, But I think that's exactly the thing that one like us should do in communicating Bitcoin. Also um, acknowledging their fears and yeah. talk to their fears and try to uh, calm them in that way or help them to understand and have, get a little bit of security. That's why I think the, the, the meetups here mm. that we were able to, to set up a group uh, yeah. on WhatsApp uh, mm. for here, Bitcoin in Zimbabwe and Bitcoin only. Uh, I think it's very important that you have those regular meetups on the ground mm. where people can really come and speak with you. And it's not just online, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was also trying to, was trying to talk because like as soon as I set up the meeting was that was like the first things we need to establish is good good communication right mm-hmm. and um, communication on I believe on WhatsApp is not going to be um, that effective because if I send you a long paragraph explaining mm-hmm. how a node works mm-hmm. why a node is important mm-hmm. or uh, Bitcoin mining mm-hmm. or um, my referral system And very few people are actually going to read it. They're going to be like, they're, they're very busy. They don't have time mm-hmm. to do this, mm-hmm. right? Um, or they, or they just say, oh, this is not a scam, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're on the ground, if you do, if you can do actually a regular meetup, mm-hmm. and you can talk to people, okay, this is this is this is the actual um, hard That's wallet. That's a hard <laughs> This is hard wallet. This is hard hardware. No, hardware. Like <laughs> hardware. Hardware. Right? Yeah. And this is how it works. And yeah. if you show them how it works in person, exactly. they will, they they will they will actually understand it. They will they will actually think. Right, and then they can even if they bring in new people, individual, they will be more open to understand it. And like you said, in a long paragraph, they're just gonna read oh Bitcoin mm-hmm. or another scam, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So meetups are very good. Mm-hmm. I'm also wanted to encourage um, Twitter, 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 Twitter Spaces where we can actually yeah. um, discuss, d- 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 um, have discussions, you know, Twitter in-depth spaces. discussions. And stuff. Just yesterday, I saw that Twitter now is setting up Twitter groups, mm-hmm. Twitter communities. Really? So yeah, so you can basically have communication on Twitter, like on WhatsApp and things mm-hmm. like that, but on Twitter. So uh, I just uh, f- uh, opened a Bitcoin for Fairness uh, Twitter oh, community oh, yesterday. Oh, oh, oh. So and I hope you will join. Yeah, I will I'll send you the invitation. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so um, there exactly. So. Trezor was so nice to sponsor uh, or donate um, mm-hmm. some hardware wallets. Mm-hmm. And I want to give you those two for the other Bitcoiners in Bulawayo, because I know it's not 
possible to get hardware wallets here, right? It isn't. Yeah, it isn't. It's, uh, I've, uh, so, so you remember when I talked about how sanctions, um, uh, when it comes to trade blocks, mm -hmm. right? Um, su supply chains, uh, supply chains disruptions, and trade blocks, is that like um, they, 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 they isolate as well with from being able to be able to just get um, basic certain trades. And then when they destroyed and isolated the market, or what, let me say, when, when the market got destroyed because maybe hyperinflation and also the um, um, the, the restrictions on, on certain goods, um, these guys who used to like the, the normal channels of shipments to Zimbabwe aren't available anymore mm -hmm. because it's not really profitable, yeah. right? So the cost of shipping most things in Zimbabwe is significantly high. Exactly, it's and you really also high. you ha also have customs because mm -hmm. these wallets were sent here uh, with UPS, and um, then I had to pay 260 US dollars to get wow. them. Yeah, 260 dollars yeah. just to bring, and this is this to get is the, small. to get to get them. I oh, mean okay. the the. I or think they don't. Big, big, they yeah. didn't really know what's inside, mm. but they just thought, okay, that's of that size. Okay. Uh, so we let them pay 260. How did you bring in? Were you, were you shipping or flight? No, it was sh shipping this oh, time. Shipping. The okay. last time I brought it in with flight. But uh, to be honest, I was happy that I didn't this time. I mean, I was lucky. But the second flight from Zambia to oh. Zimbabwe three days ago, everybody, even if you said I don't have anything to declare, they scanned all our luggage. Really? Yes, and they opened my, my, my suitcase and they wanted to know if my podcasting devices, if this is something new. <laughs> and uh, because then I would have had to pay, of well, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The they always want money for, for, for that. That's what I'm saying, that the, the cost, the, when I say Zimbabwe is the highest tax, one of the highest country, tax countries in Zimbabwe and in Africa. I mean, if you bring in a second hand car, you have to pay 100% in duty. Yeah. 100%. 100%. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. To just bring in a car, just cross the borders mm -hmm. with the thing. Yeah. Uh, so like even when, when I, because, and this is also like, like even when I wanted to, because I remember I'm also, I'm also mostly kind of entrepreneur and I was sitting at my a personal, personal training um, gym in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. ah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, I was wanting to buy equipment. Right? Yeah. And now I was thinking, so like, what I wanted to, I wanted to buy this one home gym machine. Mm -hmm. It only costs about a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. To bring it in will cost me a thousand, thousand dollars. It's crazy. And do you use runners? Um, those use, use, guys from coming from South Africa to yeah. the country? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so I ended up saying, okay, China is too expensive. Mm -hmm. Let me look. Let me look at, into South Africa. Mm -hmm. I found a gym. I don't know if you know an application called Gumtree. Mm -hmm. It's a second hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's a second-hand um, thing, mm -hmm. and they were selling a you were selling a brand new uh, uh, gym equipment. Then I'm like, we call them Malachas. So I talked to my with the guy on the Malacha guy. I was like, hey, can you bring it? Can you bring this in for me? He's like, all right, cool. He took the machine, and then he, and the nice thing about these Malachas is that those guys, I don't know, they have the connections. They pay people. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, when I used him by the border, you only had to take out twenty bucks. Okay. <laughs> for that machine, I would have taken out normally. Would have taken out like. Mm -hmm. Is maybe like a hundred or something, way, way, way more, two hundred or So times. you always have to find your way around things here. You do, you do. Every day there's something to manage. Mm -hmm. You basically can't concentrate on your work because you yeah. always have to manage stuff. Yeah, yeah? so let's, let's actually get into that because that's actually yeah. um, kind, of, kind of important. So the, so the first one was um, power cuts. So I want a personal gym. And in the night, because I did not power for four months, some of my client, my, 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 my clients in the night um, left, you know, mm -hmm. someone who was also running a lodge in the same neighborhood. These guys, these guys uh, um, need power mm -hmm. to the customers things. Mm -hmm. the, the, like telecom, the chicken ad, there's also like a, a big my chicken manufacturer, right? These guys, all the cables are selling and it disrupts all the businesses. Yeah. It really, it can actually, sometimes it can kill your business, right? Because of these small things. Mm -hmm. That's just electricity. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, um, let's look at um, our finance, right? Uh, when you wanted to get your money, I remember in 2008, it got so bad that you wake up at 2 a.m. You still wake up, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you still wake up and, and, and have these massive queues. But you wake up at 2 a.m. and um, you queue almost the whole day in order to only get up to $2 or a mm dollar -hmm. worth of cash. Yeah. And sometimes you can queue and they'll say, there's no money. There's no money left, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Right. 
uh, you look at the pension sector, $3.5 billion was, was looted from old mutual, right? Uh, and mutual and people's pensions, people were only getting $60, $60 a month, mm-hmm. right, as a pension, which is absolutely nothing. nothing. People die because yeah. of, from common illnesses because they can't afford medication mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, yeah, and people have to do this massive, old people have to wait in line mm-hmm. for, 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 for months and months mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. To, to realize that some, you, your pension isn't even there anymore. So and basically people die because of the mismanagement of the country. People, That's the thing. People literally die. Yeah. Lives are really being lost. And I believe, so the, 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 the challenge, I think one of the, the things about, about Africa and even just in most of the world, but it, it, it really applies to, to Africa is um, people aren't, epi- um, aren't, aren't empathetic to, uh, oh, sorry, are, are empathetic to, 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 to the situation in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. It's like, why should we care? This, it's, it's a dictatorship. Why should we think? Why should we even try changing it? Yeah. Um, or, so, and also, they, they, they never want to have these hard conversations mm-hmm. that, do you understand that you are a part, you can't join this, 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 this um, political opposition or party? Like my, I had my, I did it as one girl and we woke up recently and because she joined the, um, this, this political party mm-hmm. because she believed that was a solution to her acquiring wealth. Mm-hmm. And which is, very, which is very bad because if you're getting into government, and this is what she said, I want to get into government because I want to, I want to eat KFC every day. I want to do my hair, I want to do my nails. Mm-hmm. I want to buy a car for myself. Mm-hmm. I want to buy a house for myself. Mm-hmm. You're saying that I want to join government Governments whose job is to is, um, capital allocation to improve the lives of citizens. I want to join government so that I can obtain capital, so that I can improve my own life. Mm-hmm. And this is this is how you just show. This is how you see um, the individuals that are in government. These are people who get in government and they misallocate capital because they care about their own needs mm-hmm. instead of instead of doing the actual job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I did one of the flaws of that. Um, and then so I try to explain so every day that you know people are literally dying. Mm-hmm. Are actually dying. Feet, um, mothers, um, mothers in hospitals. There is no cancer machine. Uh, in it, there are no cancer machines, right? Because instead of buying cancer machines, there's no, there's not a single one. Mm-hmm. Instead of buying a cancer machine that costs two million dollars, they'll buy, they'll either give their, their, their friends and friends, um, um, what you call it, these, 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 um, uh, th- these cars. I actually, actually, I was actually staying at one of the other guys. I believe he might be political. Well, I, maybe I don't know. <laughs> The house he had, mm-hmm. you cannot. You, if you even if you took your phone, you cannot. You like you cannot take a picture of the whole entire house. You have to go so round and uh-huh. round and uh-huh. massive houses for uh-huh. what? Uh-huh. With using whose whose funds, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you try to like you try to say that okay, guys. Um, we've seen. I mean, you can. You I know you, you assume you can get rich, but you've seen what is done to our nation. Zimbabwe used to be the best. The, the best in Sadak, mm-hmm. right? And this is this is this is word. This is a quotation from Robert Mugabe, the former president, the former pilot, the mm-hmm. former president of Zimbabwe. Um, you he would have one of you would have been you would have gone on the record of being uh, the longest president in mm-hmm. dictatorship in Africa mm-hmm. if he had just stayed for four more years. <laughs> um, but he says we have disgraced, disgraced ourselves, right? Disgraced ourselves. Um, by now long de- de- democratic um, d- um, and democratic election, we were to create. We have disgraced mm-hmm. ourselves because we used to be the best. We used to be the breadbasket of Sadak, and now we are the wor- we 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 um, we're, we're the worst. Right? But it's his government that made that. That was under his. Oh, he's now because because remember he got taken off through a military coup. Yeah. Yeah. So through Emerson, by Emerson Nanga. So he was like, oh, Emso Nangaga, you weren't, you weren't democratically elected, right? And now he's blaming it on, 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 on him, saying that he should have allowed a democratic um, process, do you think? And you always find that with these, these guys in Zanopi of saying, oh, um, the problem is that we are not allowing democratic, but then you are part of Zanopi mm-hmm. You know, so um, the only reason, the only, the, the only the, the reason, one of the reasons why we are, are, are here in a world where, Eight, four, and five billion people um, live under authoritarian regimes. 
as well as because um, the 4.2, I think. You said 8. I know, it's like 4.8. It's 8. It's the whole one. Yeah, 4.2 or something. Oh, yeah, 4.2. Yeah, sorry, yeah. On the Yvonne de Thorsen regimes is because um, um, there's a quote that says that the world isn't, the, the world isn't evil because of the, uh, the, the people that, that do bad. The world is evil because um, the good people look and do nothing about it, right? You never want to have these, these, these actual conversations that, listen, mm -hmm. um, there's so much wrong in this world mm -hmm. and you can't do that. Mm -hmm. he, he, this guy is your friend. He's your, he's your, he's your brother. He's, he's your, well, he was my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He was one of my closest friends. I mean, I, I, I know people who I grew up with who are generally good people mm -hmm. and I can see them working with, the, like, and it's not only are they working with ZonPF, but they're proud mm -hmm. to work with ZonPF. They're part of it. They, they'll wear their colors, they'll post on the stage. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but you, you know that lives are being lost. You know that these guys have disordered the country. Mm -hmm. And even if you have the conversation, they say they actually know these facts, right? But they still they still go on and be proud of what these guys are doing. And they and they, they also believe that um that there is no other a, a bit, a bit of solution and stuff to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's, it's quite tricky. Yeah, that's really sad and I know because like People, I'd also, you know, not so many listen to this kind of podcasts than mm -hmm. to the other ones like investing and yeah, no, price no, go up no, and no, things no. like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, we should come to an end because mm -hmm. I think we're already talking over an hour or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. Um, I would like to talk with you a little bit about the Lightning Network um, and the possibilities for you to set up a Lightning node here. Yes, I've been dying to do that. Because I, I, um, so the, the reason why I also kind of wanted to create a community in Zimbabwe, um, and in Zimbabwe, but actually be, because I Global Bitcoin Fest mm -hmm. interviews communities all over the world, all over the world, is that I wanted to, I, I, I need to talk to them with my team. I haven't discussed, I haven't discussed, we're having a meeting soon. But I wanted to say that um, as, as we, when we ever, whenever we interview um, uh, people in these countries, we should try to recommend that they create um, communities. Mm -hmm. And in these communities, we have different um, Bitcoiners, right? You have Bitcoin miners, mm -hmm. Bitcoin node miners, mm -hmm. people who supply um, uh, maybe like hardware wallet, hard, hardware wallets, mm -hmm. uh, hardware, sorry. Yes. Um, you have individuals who who are setting up exchanges, some people who are trying to, maybe trying to make it legal to index the currencies. And mm -hmm. then you compare um, the competitive advantages. Who has a better competitive advantage mm -hmm. in mining, mm -hmm. running a node, mm -hmm. and this? And then you can say, okay, maybe we should. Maybe so. Then, then you know what is more profitable to do in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So um, the problem is, I guess, that you don't have a Raspberry Pi to set it up, right? Yeah. So what yeah. I want to do is mm -hmm. I want to ask our listeners and the followers of Bitcoin for Fairness mm -hmm. to donate uh, so that we can, that you can get a Raspberry Pi maybe in South Africa and get it delivered yeah. to your yeah. place. That would be great. Yeah, That'd so be... that you can set up a node here because uh, Africa needs lightning nodes and it Bitcoin does. full nodes. Yeah? It does because I mean, we're the one of the people that have been, because Zimbabwe has literally been isolated mm -hmm. from the whole world, mm -hmm. right? We, we, and we didn't do, the citizens didn't do anything to deserve that. Mm -hmm. Even Russian citizens. Exactly, didn't exactly. Do anything the, to deserve the, I say the same, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I, I do, so I really do think that I really wanted to run a nulling node and I wanted to see um, the, the channels, what the traffic would be like. Mm -hmm. So I can actually provide the actual numbers and the people say, okay, yeah, um, this, and, is, this, is, this is important. And you know what you then also mm -hmm. can do? Mm -hmm. You can set up um, web pages for your friends mm -hmm. who are maybe content creators or YouTubers, mm -hmm. and then you can earn lightning uh, with your own lightning node oh, wow. so you install the btc pay server yeah. you uh, run a wordpress website mm -hmm. for instance and that you can connect that and then you have uh, like a plugin on your website where you can charge people for downloading something mm -hmm. or you can s set up your own podcast mm -hmm. and host it yeah. and get uh, sats back from the listeners yeah. so these are all things that you th then can do here and then you are basically your own bank yeah, yeah. so I, that's something I definitely want to do because I really want to because the challenge with me also sometimes is that 
people will say, hi, Alexandria, I'm interested in Bitcoin. Oh, how, how can I set up a node? Well, how can I do that? Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't have the you actual experience. Tell, yeah. I can't tell them. So yeah. when I, if I actually had the experience, like if I had a computer that I could actually connect a node to, and I run a node and I run the numbers yes. and everything, and I'm like, okay, um, this is how it works. This is the cost. Okay. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do from there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Then, you know. and, and you also don't have a computer or do you have a computer? Uh, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, okay, it's I'm too right, expensive. Young, I learned that yeah. yesterday, to be honest. Mm. I realized yesterday that even my friend who's a teacher uh, and school director, she doesn't even earn enough to pay the rent. Yeah. You, and then I thought today in the morning, I thought, but then they can't afford computers. You, you, <laughs> you, you can't afford, that's the thing. Um, when he talks, when um, uh, Steve Down the Moon talks about um, hyperinflation and destruction of a of a country, you know, you 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 first hyper like okay, so a country hyperinflates, it's lo- it loses its, its currency or medium of exchange, right? And so the first thing that goes is luxury services because first people can't afford luxury services, mm-hmm. and then the second thing that goes is needs because people can't afford basic needs, mm-hmm. right? And that's why even I think um, um, Ayn Rand. I don't know if you read it, but yeah, she talks about how um, these guys these guys don't want to take you to um, um, pre-word. They want you. To, they wanted to take you to pre-existence, meaning that they will you you they will take you to a point where you don't exist anymore. You you, you die because of this government mismanagement. Mm. And if you don't do anything about it, you know, so it's, it's really up to you to gain this knowledge. Uh, to be self-sovereigns, to really work hard, to do the things that most people don't want to do. Because you know? mm-hmm. a lot of people, they they um, they'll have the occasional just um, let me talk to my friend. I I, I talk about my friend, my Bitcoin friend, but they you, you you actually need to make more of an effort. What is the hard thing? What are the things that people don't do? Mm-hmm. Talking to, going to people, trying to create communities, mm-hmm. trying to want to know it. You know, mm-hmm. doing the hard work that mm-hmm. actually gets you there. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, if they won't. They are not even interested. Oh, it needs, it needs what? Mm-hmm. I have to read a book on this. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. You know. So yeah. Okay, so we make a bigger donation, or try mm-hmm. to make a bigger donation right. to you, so that you can afford a computer and mm-hmm. a lightning note. Okay, so now we were just talking about books and I remembered <laughs> I wanted to give you my book about Bitcoin um, and also I brought a third hardware wallet because you, if you really set up a node and all the other things and you try to get more people into the Bitcoin community here, it will be good to have those. Yeah, and I really look for the thing, but I really appreciate this book because I love to read. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a book fanatic. I've, I, um, why well, Anwar's book, uh, Anwar's thing is always your uh, main quote is that, um, uh, uh, th- um, the only noble coin for life, the only the only payment no- for for life is, is to gain knowledge, right? Exactly. Like, is you, the only way you can sustain life is to gain knowledge. So man can either be a rational being or a suicidal animal. But, uh, and that's the great thing because mm-hmm. knowledge nobody can take away your knowledge no one can. you have it in here yeah. and nobody can take it away it's the same with the seed trace if you have it in here nobody yeah, no can, can take, take it, it away, away. Yeah, and you can move yeah. everywhere with yeah. it mm-hmm. yeah so thank you i know someone who's going to definitely be so excited to, <laughs> to, 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 to have this and i really want to look for the people that are really gonna use these ones yeah yeah i mean you you will find you know um there are enough good YouTube uh, tutorials on how to set it up and to store your seed. There's also in my book, um, I have like some rules about how to safely store your seed and things like that. And yes, so is there anything, a last word that you want to tell to the people abroad who are listening and watching to our interview about Bitcoin in Zimbabwe or, or how they can support you? Okay, yeah, um, I just, yeah, so, the main thing that I really want to push is that um, is, is communities, right? I really the, the one of the biggest ways of, of supporting is is as is if, if they can contact me in the different, especially if they're in Africa, contact me. Um, let me know your, your, if you have a community, and then we can talk about how much it costs to to run these things. Mm-hmm. Because the main thing, the main the main thing as an investor is you first need to um, weigh your opportunity costs. 
on running a node, uh, running Bitcoin, running uh, or running uh, buying a machine and stuff, right? And then when when you know have that all that information, you can now say, okay, I'm willing to put this much capital into that. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And um, yeah, um, yeah. So please contact me because I also work with Global Bitcoin Fest, mm -hmm. and we can have these we can have these discussions. Um, just even like learning how much it costs to just do a simple like, um, meetup, you know. But mm -hmm. I think the issue, I really want to. I think it should be it should be really as low cost as possible because yeah. Bitcoiners are trying to save as much capital exactly. to 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 buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> it's yeah. like that. And yeah, I mean uh, the node, the computer would be really really. I mean yes. yeah, because like I. I um, uh, like when I when I wanted to I wanted to run a node, and then I, then I remembered yo I needed a machine. And I was like it's the cost of buying a machine, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, like I, I really wanted to like I really wanted to run a node. I really wanted to have a yeah. hardware wallet, but it's, it's it's never been really that affordable. Okay, so, so yeah. um, do you think a thousand USD would be feasible to get a computer? Uh, the Raspberry Pi yeah. costs a little, I think two hundred fifty yeah. USD or something. Yeah, and then maybe you can even buy. Um, with the change, um, our uh, S9. <laughs> Minor. Uh, yeah, I'm so. not sure <laughs> if they are not more expensive than well, that. I'll just I'll, I'll find the capital because the one thing that I've, okay. I've been I've been really looking forward. I'll, I'll, I'll put I'll even put a bit more capital if, if if I need to so that I know what it costs to run to find you a mining want, machine. Okay, you want so, to try that? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, as I said, Zimbabwe has the cheapest form of mm -hmm. as well. So it could be a good form of, of splitting adoption. Yeah. Right? So I really want to know everything. So that when people ask me, what is the cost for what is the cost for running a node? What is the cost for mm -hmm. running a mine? Mm -hmm. what, what, where did I get this? Where did I get that? Mm -hmm. What is the post? What are the steps you took you know, to mm -hmm. get that? So that I really know first and I can give them first that information. Mm -hmm. And then on the bigger community, I can share all that information and stuff. So yeah, that would be, that would be more than half. Okay, yeah. cool. So then know. people, um, if you're watching and listening and want to donate uh, to Alexandria's project to set up a lightning node here mm -hmm. and uh, for him to be able to buy a computer, mm -hmm. then go to the website Bitcoin for Fairness, that's bffbtc.org. And there you will find uh, a donation page where you can donate to his project, like setting up a lightning node in Zimbabwe. Nice. And yeah. please donate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just as much as you can, it really go a long way yeah. in, in, in creating this, because I really want to I really want to create a bigger community. Cool. Yeah. So, and where, pe where can people find you? At, on Twitter, I think? Yes, so you can find me um, on Twitter, um, Alexandre Julie Great, or, um, or we can, you can um, find our, our, our space, Global Bitcoin, um, Global Bitcoin uh, Fest. We've been doing this before. We've been doing this. This is a new space, and I think you really love it because we get into the insights of each individual country, and you get to see what other Bitcoiners are doing, and you can get you can get insight, or you can it can inspire you to 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 do your own projects and hard works and stuff. And we also you can also earn your own reward. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you might be lucky enough to 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 win a hundred thousand sites um, by joining us. So yeah, please please sign in. Okay, Thank you so cool. much. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. Uh, have a good trip home and we stay in contact, I'd say. Yes, uh, Setting up this donation page. Yes, please do. Thank, thank you very much. much. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. As I said, if you want to donate to St. Anne's School for new computers, books and things like they really need, please go to bffbtc.org slash school donation in one word. Bffbtc dot org slash school donation. If you've enjoyed my show so far, please subscribe to YouTube, to my YouTube channel, and also to my newsletter at anita.link slash news. A special thank you goes out to the Human Rights Foundation, to OKCoin, and to Leden for supporting the work of Bitcoin for Fairness. And this time for the Zimbabwean travel, also to Dresor for donating hardware wallets for my academy participants. Thank you very much. And see you soon at the next episode of the Anita Post Show. Mm -hmm.